a lamp unto my feet. Your way is the only way for me. It's a narrow road that leads to life, but I want to be on it. It's a narrow road, but the mercy is wide, because you're good on your promise.
Thank you, Lord. We praise your holy name. Thank you, God, that your presence is in this place.
need you right now in this moment. We ask that you would meet us here this morning. We invite you into this place because we are desperate for you, God. We need you. We need your spirit. We need your patience with us. We need your grace. But ultimately, we need your love. So God, I ask that you would just pour out your love on every single person in this room, that there would be no denying that your spirit is within us, that your spirit is all around us, moving on our behalf. And even when we can't see it, God, we know that you are working. And so we thank you right now now for all that you've done in the past that all that you're doing now and all that you're going to do as we move forward but today I ask that you would just give small moments to us that we would hear your voice that we would recognize your patience with us that we don't have to do anything you're not after our works you're not after our striving you're just after our hearts and that we can just sit and be still with you so God I ask that you would meet with us this morning speak to every single person in this room in Jesus' name, we praise and we thank you. Amen and amen. Can you give God praise one more time this morning? He is so good. Well, good morning and welcome to the Bridge Bricktown. We are so glad you joined us here this Sunday morning. Go ahead and find three or four people and give them a high five and say, I'm so glad you came to church with me this morning. Excited to come to church with me this morning. It is so good to see you all. And I just want to say welcome to church. Um, if I have not met you, my name is Lindsay, and I am so excited that you're here with us this Sunday morning. I have just a couple of announcements for you guys before we jump into the word. So the first announcement, I need all of the ladies to make some noise for me. There we go. That's right. The ladies always show up for me. So we've been starting a monthly women's event where we just get together, do something fun. Last night, we actually actually had a movie night, which was such a blast to everyone who came out. So I want to tell you about next month's gathering, which is going to be a clothing swap. I don't know about you, but I have a ton of clothes I need to get rid of, but also I still want to shop and get new clothes. So on May 11th, mark your calendars, we're going to be having a clothing swap right here at the church. And the only thing you have to do to participate is bring some clothes to donate. So you bring some clothes and then you get to shop. The deadline to bring clothes will be May 5th, I believe. So you can bring it any Sunday before May 11th. You can drop it off. You can find me or Chastity, and we'll have a little collection area for clothes. But then you'll get a ticket, and we'll write your name down. And then on May 11th, you come, and you shop until you drop. And it's going to be a lot of fun. So um, that will be May 11th at 1030 AM right here. The next announcement is everybody say May 1st. May 1st, we will be having a worship night right here at Bridge Bricktown. You do not want to miss that. Our worship nights are so amazing. We're just going to come and gather and sing so many songs and just praise and spend some fun time together. So make sure you mark your calendars for May 1st. My last announcement is April 28th. So that's going to be the last Sunday of this month. We will not be having in-person service, but we will be having online service. So make sure you join us online. And the reason for that is there's going to be just like a little tiny thing like the marathon down here here. So in order for you to not try to, you know, be trying to get through all the traffic, running into runners, we're just going to do an online service only. So make sure you join us online, not in person that day. Um, that's the only announcements I have for you guys. So go ahead and open your Bridge app and we will dive into the word. Hello, everyone. It's good to see you. Thank you so much for being here with us this weekend at the bridge. It's always an honor 
to get to celebrate Jesus with you. Um, some new faces this morning. I'm glad I got to meet a few of you. Some of you were here last week. Thank you for coming back. It's good to have you back as well. Um, and if you're joining us online, thank you for taking the time. Stop down, check out our church. We'd love to see you and meet you in person. So this is the official invitation. Come on. We'd love to meet you. Anyway, we are glad that you are here. Um, I'm trying to learn a new trick. I- I'm kidding. It's not a magic trick. Um, <clears throat> and that new trick is to not repeat the announcements. However, <laughs> I want to give a shout out to Chas and Lindsay for taking charge of the, the women's stuff that they're putting together. They are spearheading that. Thank you, ladies. Um, and so um, those of us in the room that are female, you girls be like, we need women's ministry. So when they schedule it, turn up. Like, I'm not trying to be rude, but like, let's go. Uh, I don't even know what a clothes swap is. Let's be honest. I have no idea. Aren't you glad? <laughs> You're like, oh, thank God. Um, but please show up for that, support them, and support that. That's the only announcement I'm giving. That's it. I'm getting better. Um, because we want to get into God's Word. And today, we are in the penultimate message in our series, A Picture of Health. And so I hope, genuinely hope, that God has ministered to you over these 16 weeks. Because <laughs> that's how long this particular series of message is really more of a collection of messages has been. Next weekend, Pastor Cody will be wrapping it up, um, and he'll be speaking next weekend um, as I'll be here, but I won't be speaking. Uh, My nephew's getting married Thursday, and so uh, I'm the best man. Turns out I need to be there. And uh, he's getting married in Tennessee because why do anything easy? And uh, so I'll be, I'll be coming back. But we thought, you know what, with all the flights and delays and things that are happening in the world, me flying back on a Saturday, Maybe Cody should go ahead and fire that off next weekend, okay? So, uh, also, I love that dude. He can preach, man. He's good. And so, uh, make sure you're here next weekend for that as Pastor Cody wraps us up. Today, I want to say, also, thank you guys for entering into worship the way you did, because today's message title is Healthy Worship. You know, it's interesting how important worship really is. We don't understand it. We don't necessarily think of it in those terms, but it really is an important piece of having a healthy heart in our relationship with God. And so today we're going to talk about that. Uh, The verse we're going to start in is in John chapter number four. So if you want to open your app or if you want to open your Bible, uh, if your Bible still like is like a physical one, thank you. (laughs) You're like, I can't see it in here. So I stopped bringing it. It's okay. Just, I love the physical Bible. When I read my Bible, um, the reason is because I want to underline stuff, and all the people under 45 or 30 just went, bro, you can underline in your app. I know. <laughs> I know. But I like to, like, I use a ruler. It's, it's actually kind of ridiculous. Anyway, I love the tangible thing, okay? Um, and so uh, if you would stand with me this morning, if you're able and willing uh, to stand for the reading of God's Word, uh, we started doing this this year. It's not a commandment. It's just a way that we can honor God's word. They did it in the Bible. Um, John chapter number 4, verse 23 and 24 is going to probably sound familiar, but there's a few things that I want to point out about it and use it as our base verse this morning, and it says this. This is Jesus talking, and he says, The time is coming, indeed it's here now, when true worshipers, everybody say true worshipers, will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. I want you to notice something because I'm going to talk about it in a second. Spirit is not capitalized. I want you to notice that. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. For God is spirit. That one is capitalized. I'm going to talk about that in a second. So those who worship him must worship in spirit, not capitalized, and in truth. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much that you made a way where there seemed to be no way. Lord, you are worthy of literally every breath of praise we can give you. I pray today that these words that we share out of your word and in this message would be anointed and you would receive them as worship and that our room would receive them, each one of us, as an encouragement to worship you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. I want to encourage you to sit down. All right. Thank you so much. So what does it mean to worship in spirit and in truth? And why did you, Brian, point out that one's capitalized and one isn't? For some of you, this is easy. 
But not everybody was raised in the church, and not everybody's familiar with their Bible. And so uh, just a little bit of lesson here, Bible teaching. In the Bible, when spirit is capitalized, that means Jesus, the Holy Spirit, or God. It, it's referring to the Trinity, okay? Depends on the context. You'll see capitalized spirit in the Old Testament. These are types and shadows of where Jesus showed up, okay? The angel of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord, all capitalized. That's about God, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Lowercase spirit, that's us. In fact, it really means those of us who have been saved. Because if you go through Colossians and if you go through 1 Corinthians, you'll see that really the way our spirit connects with God's spirit requires us to be saved first. It requires us to have a healthy heart. In fact, you've probably noticed it with people that don't have a relationship with God, and they're like, I just don't get worship. The Bible actually says that would be the case. You're like, why well, don't I? Just listen to the song, man. Don't you hear it? And they're like, no, it's just a song. The reason is because the Bible says when we get saved, his spirit comes in us, and then now all of a sudden our spirit can communicate with his spirit. Make sense? And so when the Bible says then to worship in spirit and in truth, what's it saying? You need to have a relationship with God. If you're going to be a true worshiper, you better have a relationship with Jesus. So true worship is authentic, and it's your authentic self. We've talked about it before around here. God establishes our identity. Our identity doesn't come from where we're from or who our parents were, where we were born, all that information. Our identity comes from God's inspiration. Does that make sense? And so because of who we are in relationship with the Father because of Jesus, we can have then a healthy heart and our spirit comes to life and we can now worship in truth. So there's this description of spirit and in truth. So authenticity and accuracy. There's, there's emotion and devotion. There's, there's theology and and who I am as a man connects to God for true worship to happen. <laughs> so, this isn't in my notes. I'm just going off Think Holy Spirit. I'm going to say this. Romans 12, chapter number 1, verse, uh, Romans 12, chapter number 1, says that don't conform to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then it says this is how you can truly worship the Lord, by giving your body to him. This means you have to have the spirit in you. So if I'm going to be a true worshiper and do what Jesus said, Jesus said to worship in spirit and in truth requires that I have a relationship with Jesus. If you're in the room and you're like, Brian, I, I'm pretty sure I have a relationship with Jesus. Cool. Then engage in worship. If you are a person that was like, well, I'm just not demonstrative. I'm not an expressor. I'm not somebody that's going to raise my hand. That didn't say raise your hands for a true worshiper. That doesn't describe true worship looks like checkbox, checkbox, checkbox. It's not what it says. It says that your spirit would connect to his spirit in truth. Come on now. So if you start talking to me, I'm going to preach. I'm going to get to my notes. Jessica, you're about to inspire a man up here. All that's welcome here. So in spirit and in truth means engaging in our authentic, redeemed spirit with authenticity and devotion. And let me say this. Worship is more than a genre. Come on. Yeah, that's good. Amen. I know if you search it on Spotify, you search worship. And there's a playlist. You're like, mm, prayer time playlist. <laughs> We've got one on ours. Little Spotify, public. I should update it a little bit. It still says 2023, but whatever. But worship is more than a genre. So what is worship? Worship is truly, authentically, in my spirit, expressing love to God the Father. Yeah. It's when I express love towards him, that's worship. The problem is, when we're not worshiping God, it's not like worship stops. It just changes direction. It goes from vertical worship to horizontal worship. And horizontal worship will leave you lacking, wondering why you're even doing it, because then it's about other people. Your worship isn't about others, even though it will impact them, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Your worship is about you and him. 
And so when you worship in spirit and in truth, you're not worried about what everybody else said. In fact, I'm not going to use this story. Um, John chapter number 12. I think the verses are in there. Don't worry about it, Dakota. John chapter number 12. This isn't in my notes because I wasn't going to do it, but I feel like I need to do it right now. Mary. This is the story where Mary goes and she's anointing Jesus' feet with oil. Now, this is Mary, Lazarus' uh, sister, not Mary, Jesus' mom. Okay? Different Mary. Mary and Martha. Okay? She goes, she breaks this alabaster jar full of perfume, and it's a year's worth of stuff that she just pours on Jesus' feet, and then she takes her hair down, which is not a custom thing that people do in that custom, and she wipes his feet, and people get upset, and she's not doing it for them. She's not trying to impress the disciples. She's not trying to impress. And Jesus says, don't you worry about why she's doing it. She's preparing me for burial because it's just a few days before Jesus gets sacrificed on a cross for you and me. And the reason people didn't understand why Mary did that is because they forgot what happened to her in chapter number 11. See, people don't know her last chapter, so they don't understand her current situation. And when people don't understand the last chapter of your life, they may not understand why you express worship the way you do. See, in the previous chapters, Jesus had set her free. He had brought her through a place. He had just raised her brother from the stinking dead. And they're saying, your worship's too extravagant. Excuse me. Did y'all miss it when he raised Lazarus up out of the grave? Because that seems pretty worth it. Did you not forget that I used to be a sinner and totally lost and God had to come in, save me, and Jesus took away all my sins and restore me as a human? And you think that I can't give him enough? Are you crazy? See, that's not even in the notes. Okay. But it's the spirit that connects to him when we express love for being saved for the great things that he's done. Man, that last chapter thing, some of you, you've allowed yourself to not worship because of your own last chapter. Let your last chapter go and start reading the one you're in. Because in this chapter, if the Lord is in your soul, the last chapter doesn't matter. Right now does, and you get to spend time in presence. You can worship him in spirit and in truth despite your last chapter. That's really good. The reality is, though, that healthy worship starts with healthy heart. You have to have a healthy heart. As you guys know, around here, this whole series, A a Picture of Health, has been a healthy heart, healthy home, healthy pace kind of series. And it's important that we kind of, as Cody and I land the plane in the next couple of weeks, that we understand this. First of all, a healthy heart responds with worship. A healthy heart responds with worship. If you're filling out notes, that's why I said it twice. There are many examples and stories in the Bible that demonstrate this. In fact, I just shared one. One we may be familiar with is another one. It's the story of Paul and Silas. Now, if you weren't raised in church, uh, this is found in Acts chapter number 16. If you have your app or your Bible there, just go to Acts chapter number 16. And you're going to see this story, this recounting of this, what happened. And these guys are out going and doing what God asked them to do. They are preaching the gospel, they're, co- they're covering the, the countryside, and, and they're having church. They come across a woman named Lydia at a Bible study. They start sharing the gospel. With, it was a prayer meeting, and they find her and this group of uh, people, and they share the gospel, and this woman, Lydia, gets saved, and she invites them over to come and stay because they're traveling, and so there's this small group, of prayer group. And so Paul and Silas, day after day, keep showing up at this prayer group. And along the way, there's a woman, the Bible says that she had uh, the ability to tell the future, that she was a fortune teller. (laughs) And the reason she could do that was because she was demon-possessed. Some of y'all looking for fortune tellers instead of God's will. I ain't in my notes either, but calm now. We got to keep moving forward. And so along the way, every single day, this woman would shout out, these are the men of God, and they will tell you about God, and they'll save you. And she starts telling them every single day they walk by, these these are men of God, and they're going to tell you that the Messiah, these are men of God, every single day. Finally, Paul gets fed up with it, because what she's doing is making a mockery of it. She's making this whole situation a scene. Finally, Paul, (laughs) the Bible says he gets exasperated, and he turns around, 
And he says, demon out. Like he just, like demon come out of her. And she could no longer tell the future. Well, guess what? The guy that was her master didn't love that. Because that was his source of income. His source of income was provided by the enemy, was provided by a demonically possessed woman. So he's ticked. He goes to the city council. These men are causing all kinds of problems, and he makes up a bunch of junk about them. Now, it's not a fair trial, but the city officials understand we got to do something because verse 22, Acts chapter number 16, verse 22, a mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas. And the city officials ordered them stripped and beaten with wooden rods. Go ahead and raise your hand if you've had that today. No one. Cool. Great. Okay. Glad to hear that, actually. They were severely beaten. And then they were thrown into prison. The jailer was ordered to make sure they didn't escape. So the jailer put them into the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in stocks. I think it's fair to say, their day, not great. They're doing what God asked them to do. They're just on their way to Bible study. And then the next thing they know, they're in prison, stripped, beaten, thrown in dungeon. Probably wasn't on the bingo card for them that day. And they're not. They're not even at a huge public event. They're just walking through the street. They're not trying to draw attention. They're not, they're not trying to preach to the crowds. They get arrested. It's not fair. It's unexpected. Um, this morning when I was praying before service, I shared it with our little huddle. It wasn't this also, not in the notes. Um, it's imperative. I cannot express to you how important it is in your spiritual life to stay healthy spiritually because you'll never be ready for the curveball. You're, you're never going to be ready for the things that are unfair or unexpected. Um, if you were here the last couple of weeks, I used the illustration of my knee, and I meant to mention this last week. I had knee surgery. Um, they'd given me, it would, ultimately it was a 12-month recovery process. I was cleared to play football in six months. And the reason that I was able to get there faster is because of how healthy I went into the surgery. I was able to recover more quickly. The healthier you are when you go into the unexpected, unfair seasons, the more easily you'll recover from the things you didn't expect. The, the more quickly you'll recover, the, the healthier you'll be on the other side of it. And you can recover more quickly. See, those things happen and we don't expect them. They're not fair. But look at their response. Paul and Silas, verse 25. Around midnight... Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. So here they are, doing Jesus stuff, stripped, beaten, thrown in jail, and they decide, I'm going to worship. A healthy heart responds with worship. They didn't see this coming. This is not like they picked it. They were actually doing the right things. And their response, even when their day was bad, was to worship. Let me ask the hanging question here. What's your response when your day is bad? God, why have you forsaken me? The devil is out to get me. Where are you at, Jesus? I have a flat tire again. No! I can't worship you. Notice, they didn't worship because of the situation. They worshiped in spite of it. Their response in the circumstance was to worship, not be beaten by the, worship, by the experience. See, so here they are doing the right things. They, they demonstrated that healthy hearts respond with praise even when your day doesn't go your way. A healthy heart will praise when it doesn't make any sense. That's why we have to stay healthy. Look what happens next. Verse 25 again. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying, singing hymns to God, and other prisoners were listening. 
Do you realize that the world around us is less impressed with how we react when things go well, but they're more impressed with how we react as Christians when things don't go good? It's, it's the people that aren't believers and they see someone whose family member passes away and they have joy and peace somehow and they're like, how are you doing that? It, it's, it's those people that even when they have something awful happen in their world, they can still stand and say, I love Jesus and I trust in him. They don't understand it. Why? Because a healthy heart responds with praise and people are like, that doesn't make any sense. That's when they notice the reality of your faith and the reality of God. See, our praise has an impact. And here's the thing. They didn't do it in expectation of something. They didn't start worshiping and praying to like some sort of weapon. We always talk about worship is our, this is how I fight my battle. But it wasn't a weapon. They didn't look at their chains and their hands and go, I worship so that these will fall off. Like, that's not what happened. It's not like they tried to use the force of worship. Yes, I'm going to worship so that maybe. No, they didn't expect anything. They just responded to their situation with worship and praise. They worshiped in spirit and in truth. They sang because they believed. They sang because they were truly in love with God. They sang as their default mechanism. In fact, if you go back to the beginnings of the church in Acts chapter number 2, verse 42, the Bible says that they hung out together, they worshiped together, they sang together, they encouraged one another with psalms and hymns. This is what they're doing in their prison. The things they've been taught at church. <laughs> go figure. And I know the situation is awful. I know the day didn't go my way. But I also know in whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly more than I could ever ask or imagine. And in this moment, I'm going to give him praise. They decide in the deepest, darkest dungeon, chained to each other, stocks on their feet, I'm going to have a praise break. See, we need a praise break because we got a raise. We need a praise break because somebody got something crazy happened. We need a praise break because I got a bigger house. I need a praise break because I got a new car. I need a praise break. Yeah, you should worship God for that stuff. But what about when your day breaks? Can you still have a praise break when your day breaks? That's good too. I should write that down. Let me encourage you this morning to praise even when you feel like a prisoner. Maybe your prison is fear. Maybe your prison is your past. Maybe your prison is, I don't want to go down the list because I'll skip yours and you'll be like, whew. Even when you feel like a prisoner, you can still praise. Because they didn't know what was about to happen. They just kept singing. Worshiping can break the chains and open doors in ways we never imagined. In fact, the next point is worshiping God reveals solutions I can't see. I didn't see this coming, but God made a way. I didn't know I was going to get thrown in jail, but I also didn't know what was about to happen to them was about to happen. See, they didn't know where they were going to see this amazing miracle happen. Verse 26, suddenly there was a massive earthquake. And the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open, and the chains of every prisoner fell off. They start praising, the world starts shaking. The prison starts to rumble, their chains fall off, and they're like, oh, that was so cool. But they didn't know that was going to happen. They didn't know that was going to happen. They weren't singing for the other guys in the prison, but their chains fell off too. See, when you let the chains uh, in your life hold you where you're supposed to be, hold you where they want you to be, you'll miss what God has in the future for you. So let me ask you this. Will you let the chains break your praise or let praise break your chains? Which one are you going to pick? Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. And when we begin to worship from our spirit, his spirit, the two become one, and guess what? There's freedom in that. So the solution to your situation is sometimes just on the other side of your worship and praise. And God showed up even in their prison because true worship 
comes from healthy hearts. And that's why this is true. Worshiping God restores joy. Psalm 28, 7, the Lord is my strength and shield. I trust him with all my heart. He helps me and my heart is filled with joy. What's the next line? I burst out in songs of thanksgiving. I don't sing, Brian. I don't care. Because you can worship without singing the words. I see you people do this. If I were to, right now, I would offend half the room. I know this. But if I were to, right now, fire up Boomer Sooner, half this room would start going... You will burst out because of the joy that that song puts in our hearts. Nothing wrong with that. Can we do that for God too? The next one is worshiping God reaches others. Acts chapter number 16, verse 27, the jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. Now remember, he had been given strict instructions. Don't let them out. Mm -mm. He assumed the prisoners had escaped. So he's thinking, I'm a dead man. If they're gone, I was told specifically don't let them go. Trouble. So he drew, in, he drew his sword to kill himself. Only feasible option. <laughs> no, he just knew he was in big trouble. But Paul shouted to him, stop, don't do it. We're all still here. There's something about being in the presence of God that you just don't want to leave even if you're in a prison. Even in those prison feeling moments, when the presence of God shows up, you're not in a hurry to get out of it. When the presence of God shows up, it's for anyone who's in the area. See, they were singing to someone, not for anyone. They were singing to God. And when we worship in spirit and truth, others are definitely listening. Second thing here is a healthy heart remains in worship. I'm going to invite the band to come back up. If you go on to study the rest of that chapter, you'll see that the jailer and his whole house and all the people around him ended up giving their lives to Jesus, all because in a prison moment, Paul and Silas decided, praise break. They didn't know they were getting out. They didn't know what was going to happen. They knew they were at the, the whim of somebody else. Praise break. They knew their day was terrible. They knew they hadn't, it hadn't gone their way. They knew that they didn't know what their future was. They were just totally, we're in a jail. That's, that's what we know. Praise break. It's in the middle of the night, in the middle of a dungeon, and we are chained to the floor. Praise break. And in that moment, because they chose to worship God, they remained in worship. They were on their way to church. Remember, they had a worshipful heart. They were going. They remained in worship, and it impacted the entire prison. Psalm 34, verse 1. I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak His praises. So you don't have to sing, you can speak. I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. Come let us, come let us tell the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. So the question becomes, what does healthy worship look like? It's like I said at the beginning, is it this? Is it this? Is it this? Is it this? It doesn't have a look. Jesus told us. It's when we engage our spirit with his spirit in who we are, where we are, the, wet, the, the junk we're carrying, the praise we're carrying, the highs, the lows, when we just show up and engage him in spirit and in truth.
Do you have a relationship with Jesus? A healthy heart responds with worship. Do you have a relationship with Jesus? A healthy heart remains in worship. I'm not saying you don't have bad days. Bad days are going to happen. I'm not saying that every time something bad happens, you should be like, praise the Lord. Now, like that, don't be silly. But there's a joy and a worship that is deeper than a circumstance. It's the revelation that we should pursue, not the situation that should change us. And so this morning, we're going to do something a little different. Shocker. Kelly and the team are going to lead us in a chorus. And I'm going to invite you, wherever you are, to worship. What does that look like, Brian? It doesn't have a look. I want you to engage your spirit with truth. Lord, we bring to you now this sacrifice of praise for all you've done (laughs) with all of our own needs, all the messed upness, all the jacked up mess that we carry with us right now, all the things that are just broken and gross. Lord, we're going to show up as we are so that we can worship you. If our prayer team would come forward, um, if you want to receive prayer during this time, Man, we want to pray with you. Last week, we stopped in the middle of worship and said, hey, I feel like there's some people that need healing. And since last Sunday, I've received three testimonies of people that were healed. Crazy. I'm like, what? One of them was watching online. Are you joking? See, you should watch online. So Kelly's going to lead us in a course. We sang it this morning. But I want to invite you now to just worship. If you'd like to receive prayer, we'd like to invite you to come and receive prayer as well.
that part again, the more I know you. Lord, thank you so much for making a way that we can worship you in spirit and in truth. God, I pray that you would continue to do healing things in the spirit, do healing things in friendships and relationships. God, continue to bless the men and women of this house. Lord, we know you're up to something, and we just want to be a part of it. And so, God, I pray right now that every person in this room would be blessed. They would hear you, they would know you, and they would know their next step in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Can we give the Lord praise again this morning? Well, today, thank you so much for being here. If today's the first time you've been with us, it's truly an honor to get to celebrate Jesus with you. I want to invite you to stop by our starting point. It looks like Chas and Andy. Is that who I see back there? I have terrible vision. Sorry. We have a gift for you. Fill out the guest card right there in front of you, the communication card. Take it to them. They'll trade you, and they'll give you a coffee mug that holds more than coffee. It will also hold sparkling ice, which is what I drink almost exclusively. So there you go. You're like, what is that? It's just seltzer water with red coloring in it. I don't know. Tastes good. Uh, Tastes like raspberries. Uh, So (laughs) do that. And then also, if today is your day to tithe or give your offering, ooh, update. We are almost all the way through on our uh, lobby redesign and all that stuff. So if you have a a remodel, if you've been donating to that, we haven't reached our goal yet, but we are really, really close. So if you are um, tithing or giving your offerings or your remodel donations, thank you so much for that. Do that either through the app or through the offering boxes on the wall. I cannot wait to be with you again next Sunday, all right? Next Sunday, as we wrap up this series, Pastor Cody will be sharing. It's going to be a great day. Have a great week. God bless, and be safe.